So 12, right? Okay, it's here. But what you guys have to understand is that the first term in the binomial is decreasing. So like 2, 1, 0, or like here, you always start at what the exponent is. So 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. The second term starts at 0 and increases to 4. So nothing b to the 1, b to the 2, b to the 3, b to the 4. Okay, once you convince yourself that decreasing, increasing, this is where Pascal's triangle comes in. You really just have to know the coefficients of what you're multiplying by, and then you're pretty good, okay? So 12, all right, it's to the fifth. So you don't have to memorize it. You just have to really quickly be able to build it. So you add the numbers together. And so there I am. This is the fifth row. And so usually when you're taking a test, if a student understands it, this is just they kind of just build it themselves. Okay. You always start with the one, because that's because everything to the zero power is one, and that's why you start with one. And then the rule is you add another one to the left and the right, and then from there you add. So you added the one and the one, but the two came from one plus one. And there's your two. One plus two, three, two plus one, three. And that's just how you build it up. Okay, all right, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six terms. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm just going to write the coefficients here. The variables, we're just going to kind of put it underneath it because that we should be convinced of. Okay, so look, the first term has a variable a, so I'm going to start with a to the fifth, a to the fourth, a to the 3, a to the 2, a to the 1, and then a to the 0, but we're not even going to write that. Right? Because then it's going to look too, it's too chaotic with everything written in. The second term in the binomial has the letter b, the coefficient b. So you now increase b to the 0, b to the 1, b to the 2, b to the 3, b to the 4, b to the 5. And notice, you did it right because each term should not surpass what the exponent is. Five, so I have five. Four plus one is five. Three plus two is five. Two plus three is five. One plus four is five. Five. So you know you did it right. You shouldn't have a four, you shouldn't have a six. Five, okay? All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's focus on what the coefficients would be. From that, Pascal's triangle, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so we're going to multiply that. Keep going? Yeah. Okay, so <coughs> what is the coefficient for this first term? You see A, but what's the coefficient? Positive or negative? positive, right? It's just plus one. Okay, even better, because what's positive one to the fifth power? One. What's positive one to the zero power? One. What's positive one to the first power? One. So this one's easy. This coefficient is positive one. So if you start plugging in positive one to the fifth, positive one to the fourth, it doesn't matter. It's just one. And then that's just right. So it doesn't matter. This is still 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 and 1. So for students that, under, that are, they now kind of mastered it, they would completely ignore that first decreasing coefficient. It's irrelevant. Anything times 1 is 1. It's just that identity property. It's the second one that you're looking <coughs> at, the positive 2. So this one's decreasing because it comes from the first term. The second term, coefficient 2, is now increasing. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that 2, this is the coefficient 2. So this is 2 to the 0, but doesn't matter, plus 2 to the first power, plus 2 to the second, plus 2 to the third, ah, 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth. 
and you just clean up the math. So there's three values that you're multiplying. You're multiplying the Pascal's triangle coefficient from the pattern. You're multiplying the coefficient of the first term as it decreases, and you're multiplying it by the second coefficient of the second term as it increases. Those are the three numbers you're multiplying by that creates the coefficient. Okay. So here, what's 1 times 1? One? 1. So, so far I have 8 to the fifth. What's 5 times 1 and 2 to the first power is 2. So what's 5 times 1 times 2? 10. Right? So this would be 10. Here, what's 10 times 1 and 2 squared is 4. 10 times 1 times 4 is then 40. Right? I didn't mean to write the 10 there. It doesn't. I only I did that accidentally meant to do here. Okay. What's 10 times 1, 2 cubed is 8, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So what's 10 times 1 times 8? 80. A squared B cubed. And then here, what's 5 times 1, 2 to the 4th? 16. Because... 2 times 2, right, well, here, let me do 2 to the 4th, 16, right? Okay, so what's 5 times 1 times 16? 80, right? 80. So 80, A, B, 4. And then what's 2 to the 5th? <coughs> 32. And so this becomes 32. So 1 times 32 is 32b to the fifth. And so this is your expansion. You have to do a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, like 30 plus, to finally start figuring out the negatives and like how it alternates and the more you do, it, it literally is practice makes perfect. Something like this, it's tedious. And so if usually the practice is kind of tedious, the more you do, the cleaner you become. And that's by no means expansion. Let's go. Not bad, right? Better than doing it on five. Okay, I'll stop the video. Um, I would say try one of them. I'll put the answer up, and then we need to move on to this. Yeah? Okay, so which one are you guys going to do next? Because I want to move on to this, but you guys could try them, and then maybe at like 9.05, I'll, I'll kind of talk about this. Is there one collectively you guys, you guys want to try 18? Or, oh wait, you guys had to do that one by hand. I don't know what you guys want to do. All right, then work on your own. Figure it out. The 18 you had to do by hand, which is horrible. So do this one then by Pascal's triangle because it's a 7. Or you can do 14. Either one you have to do it by hand. So I would say stick to this list then to um, solve it using the binomial expansion, Pascal's, and see if you got the right answer.